قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض ذلولا It is he, your Lord, who made the earth tractable for you. ذلولاً فامشوا في مناكبها So, travel in its open roads. فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه and eat from his provision وإليه النشور But you're going to stand before him. Your resurrection is going to be before him. My friends, this life is a journey of learning. A journey of learning from the beginning to the end. Every day is a day of learning, is a day of inspiration, is a day of discovery for us. And one of the things that we learn through them is when you travel, a sayr of al earth. A sayr of al earth. Which is mentioned in the Quran. How many times the Quran says, Siru fil ardi fanduru. When you walk, when you travel, reflect. Wanduru. Look left and right, go to other nations, go to other countries, go to other societies, but you have to learn. Don't go blinded. Don't go just to, to lay down in the sun so you get suntan and, and then you come back after two weeks with different color. Go there to learn. To learn, to discover, to learn. The Prophet asked his community at the time where there are no airplanes, no trains, no vehicles, no vessels, nothing, that even if it takes you to go to the farthest point, which is China, then you must go to learn. Go to learn, to, to discover. That is in chapter Al Ankabut. In Surah Al-Rum, God encourages immigration. God says, travel. If you are restricted in your area, no work, no job, no opportunity, no change, then move it. Move. Go to another area. Leave it and go to another area. Alam takun ardullahi wasi'atan. Surah Al-Rum. Alam takun. Didn't I create this vast land for you? This is for you. Why are you restricted? Why do you stay in one area for the rest of your life? Even the conditions are terrible and bad. Don't do this. It's an encouragement for us to move. Leave that spot. Don't stay. If there is no progress, don't stay. Don't blame it on God. God says, I don't create an opportunity for you here. Maybe it is somewhere else. Go and find it. Until you find it. Until you grab it. Don't sit somewhere and say, I'm poor. God wanted me to stay poor. No, 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 no. This is not right. God says, I want you to be rich. But at the same time, I want you to move. I want you to go and discover. Discover nations. What is happening? Sometimes we think my village is the best village and my people are the best and my language is the best and my country is the best. I don't know that God created many other cultures and nations and languages and people. Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha and we made you into thousands of nations and tribes. Wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'il so you discover each other, you travel and you learn from each other. We learn how they did they succeed and how they failed. We learn from both. Quran says also learn not only from their success, but from their failures. If they have a problem, you have to learn why they have this problem, why they have dictatorship, why they have famine, why they have civil war, why they have discord among them. So learning is not just going through the school, but when you travel in the land. When you walk in the land of God that belongs to God and see the people around you, interview people, talk to people, learn from these people. This is a huge encyclopedia of knowledge about anthropology, about sociology, psychology, and so on and so forth. We have to learn it. One of the benefits of traveling is, is that we learn patience and tolerance and forbearance. When you travel, when you leave the comfort of your home, the comfort of your bed, 
your living room, then you're going to encounter difficulties and challenges. One of the mind-boggling stories in this book, in chapter 18, the trip that Musa made, Musa made a trip, an important trip that changed his life. It changed his life entirely. It was a wake-up call for Moses because Moses one day asked God, God, show me some of the unseen, some of the things that ordinary people do not notice. God says, okay, are you ready for it? He said, yes, but he wasn't quite ready. He wasn't. If you read Surah Al-Kahf, he wasn't. He's a human being. So God said to him, go to such and such a place. You're going to find such and such a man that is going to be your mentor, your tourist guide. Listen to him. Don't disobey him. So he found him. Some stories say this is another prophet, Al-Khidr, who was the teacher of Musa. And Musa humbled himself before him. I, I accompany you and I serve you. I'm even ready to serve you. So it changed his life. He saw things that are very incredible in this story. Unthinkable, some of them. Unthinkable. Musa was shocked. But that guy said to him, you have to be patient. You have to be patient till the end. If you are not patient, you are not going to learn. So when you travel, tell your wife, tell your kids, you have to be patient. One of the things we learn when we travel is we are patient. The other thing that we learn and I learn when I travel, when I go to poor areas, deprived areas, poor communities, they have no privileges. They don't enjoy what we enjoy in the richest state in America, the state of California, in the richest county in America, Orange County. They don't have these privileges, amenities. They don't. They can barely find in some communities, barely find some food to survive on basic food. So when we return, we have to be thankful to God. We have to be grateful to God. When you look at your family living in peace, they have education, they have health care, they have bed, they have electricity, they have running water, they have medicine. They have peace and security. In some countries, they don't dare leaving their homes, their neighborhoods. It's not safe. So when you find these things, you have to give thanks to Allah. Always give thanks. That Alhamdulillah, I'm much better than others. Look at the suffering of others. But sometimes I see the opposite. Sometimes I see the poor people, they give thanks to God. And the rich people, they don't give thanks. They complain. I see the opposite. We have to learn to be thankful. And to be thankful is not easy. This is the biggest test. To be thankful. To be thankful. To appreciate. To be grateful to God. One day, someone came to Imam al-Sadiq. He said to him, God has given me so many things, so many things in my life. How can I thank him? Imam al-Sadiq said, you can thank him when you say sincerely from the bottom of your heart, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. When you say it with conviction, with understanding, you are paying back to God. You are becoming thankful to God. Do we say this sentence? How many times do we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen? So we have to say it. We have to learn to be thankful. Otherwise, we lose what we have. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And the last part of traveling. What do we learn? Traveling also teaches us how to survive on the minimum. Because sometimes, thanks to United Airlines and Delta and American Airlines, they charge you on the back. So people put all the, their things in the carry-on. So they don't pay extra money. But this is good, believe me. It teaches you how for three days, four days, one week, ten, ten days, you survive on the minimum. And then when you come back home, you realize that much of the things that you have is extra. You really don't need it. It's not necessary. You can survive without it. You come back, you look at your wardrobe, the stock of clothing, shoes that you have, too much. You don't even use them. And you could survive for two weeks on the minimum. So we learn. We learn that 
Happiness does not mean I have more and more and more. I go to the market and buy more and more and more. They become burden on us. Imam Hassan says, take what is necessary. And necessary, leave it for others. Leave it for others. This is how we fight greed. We fight greed when I use what I really, whether it is food, clothing, space, vehicle, I use what is really necessary for me to survive. The rest, if I leave it for others, there is no more greed. There is no more conflict. There is no more fighting.